uh, when Krishna is gone, then people will be lost. So he gave this Bhagavata Purana, and this, this Bhagavata is non different from Krishna. They are uh, describing about the pastimes. Srimad Bhagavatam is describing about the pastimes of Lord Krishna and the, uh, his devotees. So it is non different from Krishna himself. And if you read Bhagavatam, you will be able to see Krishna's personal form. Okay? So that much potent is Bhagavatam. And Bha Bhagavad Gita is just uh, one level. Uh, it is just uh, another uh, basic version of Bhagavatam. So Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam, Krishna has given us so that we will be able to see what is really good for us and we will be able to work towards it. So this is the flashlight or the torchlight that Krishna has given us in his absence because it is as good as Krishna himself. Bhagavatam is as good as Krishna himself. So when he goes to his abode, it says Krishna Swadhamo Pagate. When he goes to his abode, he, uh, he gives this Bhagavatam to us so that we can see people who have lost the vision due to Kali Yuga's influence, they will be able to get light from this Bhagavatam. Okay, and uh, I think you all remember uh, in the first class, uh, Mataji was talking about how Srimad Bhagavatam is one of the 18 Puranas, remember? So that's what it says. You can get light from this Purana. Does anybody have any questions? I see some participants raised hands. Do you have any questions? If anybody has any questions, you can. Yes, Aurav. Okay, Aurav, you want to ask? No more questions. Okay. So if we don't have any questions, we can move forward. Let's continue with the story of King Bharata. Okay. From the last two classes, we have learned how King Bharata was a very efficient. We saw... Uh, okay, there was some muting and unmuting. Okay, so we saw from the previous two classes that how King Bharata was the emperor of the entire world and he was a very efficient king, very kind and very... Uh, he was a very efficient king in the sense that he used to know the needs of the citizens and he used to fulfill everybody's needs and also not just that he was a good king but he was also very spiritual. So he never left his devotional practices. So he was also spiritual. Because of that, he got the knowledge and he knew that the ultimate goal of life was not just living a, a life as a good king and satisfying everyone, but his ultimate purpose was to think of Krishna at the time of death and go back to his abode. Okay? He knew that. So Although he was a very nice king and he had so much of wealth and whole kingdom and possessions, he was ready to renounce everything. Okay, so we saw yes in yesterday's class, what is renunciation? Okay, does somebody want to answer what is renunciation? You can raise your hands. Always raise your hands. Okay, I see Bhishma raised his hand. Bhishma, you can go ahead. What is renunciation? I have unmuted you. Bishma, do you want to answer? Okay, let's move to the next one. Uh, Aurav, Aurav, you can go ahead. Yes, Mataji. So what is renunciation? What is renunciation? It's like, um, it's like, what did King Bharata do? Oh, yes. Um, he, but, um, he, he and concentrated surrendered on to Krishna. Yes. So, 
he gave up his kingdom he gave up his wealth he gave up his sons and wife in order to go into the forest and meditate on the supreme lord okay so that renunciation means to give up something that is very dear to you if you don't like something and you give it up that's not renunciation but it's something that is really uh, very nice and uh, something that you really like to possess that you are giving up that is renunciation okay so having lived a life of king and having lived a very opulent life as a king to renounce everything all of a sudden and to go to the forest is something really very great so that is renunciation okay to sacrifice or to give up something that is very dear to you okay so that's what maharaj bharata did and what did he do he went into the forest and he started meditating on the supreme lord he used to uh, take bath early in the morning meditate on the supreme lord and he used to just go find roots and fruits and uh, he used to completely be absorbed in the meditation of the supreme lord okay so now we move on to today's story continuing from where we left okay so what happens is one day when king bharata yesterday we saw that he used to uh, meditate on the banks of the river gandaki right so one day he was meditating on the banks of the river. his are half open okay that is a pose of meditation that sometimes they are concentrating on the supreme lord that their eyes are half open so with his half open eyes he happened to see a doe what's a doe a doe is a female deer okay so this doe was carrying a baby in its stomach so this doe was having the baby and she came to drink water from the river and because she was very thirsty she drank very deeply from the river and then these deers they are very timid creatures in the sense that they are very uh, susceptible to fear some you know small thing that can frighten them they are immediately frightened okay they really uh, frightened to death so suddenly when she was drinking she heard the roaring of a lion and that lion's roar was very big and very loud because of that every the whole surrounding was really echoing and hearing that roar she was really frightened like anything and out of fear what did she do she leapt across she leaped over the river and when she leaped the baby that was there in her stomach it fell into the fast flowing river so now bharata king bharata is watching all this he is seeing the deer the baby deer the baby deer is called fawn okay so he is seeing the fawn floating in the river and the mother the, the mother deer she leapt across and then out of fear for the lion she just ran away and then she entered into a cave and because of uh, because of her uh, tiredness and her weakness and because the baby fell and she lost her baby into the river she was very upset and in that state she left her body so the mother deer is no more there mata so, yes the slides are not moving oh okay 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 so the mother deer she left her body and king bharata is seeing that the baby deer the fawn is floating in the river and so now he is thinking oh the mother deer is not there what will the baby deer do poor baby deer poor fawn i have to protect that baby deer so thinking king bharata took the babe, the fawn and very caringly he brought the bay fawn to the to his ashram because he wanted to save the baby deer okay so now he had compassion for the baby deer this is where all the story begins okay so how he uh, became attached to the deer that's what we are going to see now so now he has taken the fawn to his ashram and then he he did a good job because he was compassionate to the bay, uh, fawn but now he is thinking the next step okay this fawn it doesn't even have a mother and uh, babies when baby is born it needs a lot of care from the mother the mother uh, has to literally spend a lot uh, almost whole day with the baby so now it is a baby uh, deer and it needs lot of care so now king bharata is thinking 
who will take care of this baby dear? Now its mother is also not there. So maybe, you know, I can uh, take care of it for some time. So this is how he started. And then what happened? Slowly, he started getting attached to the deer. Whenever the deer was hungry, it would come to him and he started feeding grass to the deer. And when he heard the sound of some wild animals in the forest, he came near the deer and protected it from all the wild animals. And not only did he protect, now when the baby deer's body was itching, King Bharata went forward to scratch the itch. And home to the deer that sometimes he would take the pawn. Okay, so no, slowly, pawn is growing up. Okay, then what happened? Slowly, as days went by, he became so attached that when the bay, when the fawn would eat, he would eat. When the fawn would drink water, he would drink water. When the fawn would sleep, he would sleep. And uh, he was so much attached that you know he used to think that. What if I leave the baby deer somewhere here and then some wild animals come and attack? So let me always eat the deer. So whenever he went into the forest to collect the fruits and roots, he used to take the deer all the time. So literally the fawn was with Maging Bharata 24 hours. And he slowly started forgetting the real purpose of his coming to the forest. What was the real purpose of coming to the forest? He wanted to meditate on the Supreme Lord and Think of him at the time of death so that he can go back to Godhead. That was his purpose. But now, because of this uh, attachment to this deer, he lost his focus and he lost his uh, purpose of coming to the forest. And now he was so blindly in love with the fawn that he would literally be with the fawn 24 hours a day. And when he was meditating, okay, sometimes he used to remember, okay, okay, I have to meditate. So he would sit and meditate. And then suddenly he would think that, you know, oh, my baby deer is missing somewhere. So as soon as he, the baby deer goes out of sight, he starts thinking that, oh, what happened to my baby deer? Maybe, uh, you know, some wild animals came and uh, uh, it harmed the baby deer or it ate the baby deer. So he started thinking so much about it. So even while meditating, while he was supposed to meditate, even that time he used to be, always worried for the deer. And now, what happened slowly? Yeah, so now he was always taking care of the baby deer and slowly he was getting nearer to his time of death. So all the time he was taking care of the deer and he forgot his spiritual duties of meditating. Now, the terminal exam of life came. Death came near him. And while he was dying, the baby deer was there right near him. The fawn was standing right next to him. And, and it is also crying because now the fawn is also attached to King Bharata. And it could understand that King Bharata was leaving his body. So the fawn is also crying and uh, very lovingly looking at him. Now King Bharata is thinking, oh, oh sweet for me. It is so, I don't care of this deer. Maybe some wild animals will come and harm it. And uh, uh, who will give water to this deer? Who will protect it? Because he has been thinking that he is the only protector for this deer. So he has been thinking himself as the protector of the deer. Now, if he leaves the body, who will protect the deer from all the dangers? Who will take care of the deer? So thinking... He left his body and there comes What a state of being remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. What happened? What he was thinking at the time of was thinking about the deer. And so what happened? Next birth birth as a he remembered the deer while he was dying, so he took birth as a deer. Okay, so we will stop here for today, but let's introspect a little bit into the story so that we can understand what happened and why it happened. Okay, so now I'm going to ask a question why King Bharata got attached to the deer because initially he knew the real purpose of life. Okay, Sri raised hands. 
So, Shri, do you want to answer? Uh, Hare Krishna Mataji, um, because the king felt bad that the baby deer was left alone when her mother um, died. Yeah, right. Thank you. So that was uh, one of the reasons. But uh, initially we saw how he was so realized that such opulent life he was living. All such luxurious life, kingdom and uh, his uh, citizens and uh, his sons, his uh, wife, everybody was so loving to him. And he left, he left all of that to come to the forest to meditate on the Supreme Lord. He knew it. He renounced such uh, good possessions to come to the forest. And why he got attached to a barrier which is not even related to him? Okay, why do you think uh, this, these kind of things happen? But you know, it's such a silly mistake, right? In one sense, because he was so realized and he was able to renounce his kingdom so easily. Why did, why did he have to get attached to the baby deer? Does any, uh, can anybody give any reasoning? Why would this have happened? Because he was a realized person. Why did he get attached? Okay, Lassia. Lassia, do you want to answer? Uh, yes, ma'am. He got attached to the deer because uh, it didn't have like a mother and the mother died. Yeah, he, yeah, there was some reasoning. Okay, so it so happens that uh, sometimes even when we get some realization, we don't, uh, we do understand that, you know, life in this material world is not permanent. And we do understand that this temporary material world is full of misery we get realization when somebody dies, we understand that, okay, this person is dying. So nobody can live in this material world permanently. We get the realization, right? So, and some near or dear dies, we think, okay, we get some realization for a few days, we are very grave and we are very sober. We think, okay, so one day death will also come to me. So we realize that fact. And after some time, it so happens that when we see something else that would make us happy, we forget all that things that we realized. Okay, so in this material world, it is a very uh, natural thing that again and again, although we may read something, although we may realize something, although we may understand, again and again, we get attached or we get bewildered or we are in illusion thinking that we can enjoy again. Why do you think this is like that? Not just for King Bharata, it happens to us also sometimes. We know what is right, but sometimes we get distracted from our focus. So why do you think that happens? Does anybody want to answer? Okay, so the answer is again in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, okay, Aryan raised hand. Aryan, do you want to answer? What, what do you want to answer? Why do you get attached? Oh, what? Do you like what is this? Fire. Hare Krishna. Aryan, do you want to answer? Okay. So. Yes. Why, um, how King Bharata got attached to the deer is like, because his mother died. So um, King Bharata felt, felt bad for the deer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so I was asking why this happens because uh, it happens to us also sometimes that we know so, so many things, but still we get attached. We have our reasons for getting attached. I'm like, okay. Yeah. Can you give an example, like an example of getting attached to something? Mataji, can Ramachandra go? Uh, yeah, thank you, Aryan. We go to somebody else. Yes, uh, Ramachandra, you can go ahead. Do you want to say something? Okay. Yeah. 
Um, Go ahead. Because of this Maya that we're getting attracted. Wow. Right. Yes, that was what I was looking for. So in this material world, thank you so much, Ramachandra. In this material world, Maya or illusion is always attacking us. So even if we realize something, Maya doesn't want to leave us. This material nature is like that. It will put us into illusion again and again. It will not allow us to focus on Krishna all the time. So in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, the, uh, in the third chapter, it's, uh, Krishna has, says a very nice shloka that has fast covered smoke. You see the first picture, fire is covered by smoke. Okay. And as mirror is covered by dust. You see the second picture, mirror covered by dust. And as the womb covers the embryo. Similarly, the living entity is always covered by lust or the desire to enjoy. That is why again and again, we are falling into this trap of Maya or illusion. Okay. So this is the reason why King Bharata also got attached because Maya has his, uh, its different ways of attacking. Okay, you renounced your kingdom, you renounced your wealth. Okay, let me give some other. Uh, so now she's, she is giving the reason. See, now this baby deer is not having any ma mother to take care. So now let's see whether you get attached. And he fell a prey to that. So you may renounce so many other things, but Maya will still keep attacking. But if we are single pointed, we have single pointed focus. If we are really focused on our real or on our ultimate goal, then we will not get distracted. But we have to keep fighting against Maya. It's very difficult to overcome that illusion. Okay. And in the Shikshashtakam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu describes that the Sankirtana movement is going to give benediction to the humanity at large and it is going to. Uh, destroy all the dust that has been accumulated from lifetimes. Okay, so this li dust is not accumulated from one lifetime. It is accumulated from many lifetimes. And what is the dust that is covering us? The illusion that we are not the soul and we are the body. The illusion that we are this body is the dust that has been covering us for a long time. So we forget our real position, our real constitutional position as servant of Krishna and be become prey to Maya's trap. Okay, so the, uh, in the Sikshashtikam also it is very beautifully described how all the dust is accumulating in our hearts and it is covering us and chanting of the holy names can clear the dust. Okay, so has now... Anyone having... that, has yes. have anyone not had um, the thing? What? What was yeah. that question? Can you repeat again? Has anyone um, ever um, survived Maya? Many people, the pure devotees of the Lord. We have uh, so many examples uh, in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, Dhruva Maharaja, we have uh, very great devotees like Prahalad Maharaj. So many examples and not just in Srimad Bhagavatam, even in Kali Yuga. Uh, we have seen, uh, we have heard uh, about pure Vaishnavas who have left their body thinking about the Supreme Lord and who have lived a life of example. And uh, even Srila Prabhupada himself has led a life of uh, complete dedication to God. So are, they still, life. are they still alive? There are few uh, pure devotees who are alive as well. Yes. Srila Prabhupada's disciples themselves, they are, and also so many other pure devotees are there. We may not be able to recognize them because they may seem just like any other person, but with their dedication and with their activities, we can understand that there are pure devotees who are able to survive the attack of Maya. Everybody is being attacked by Maya. Okay? So, Let's move to the next part. Okay, now having talked about attachment, now we are, we are talking about attachment as being negative, right? Because because of that attachment with the deer only, King Bharata lost his purpose. So is attachment to anything or anybody not good? Say for example, we, have, we might have uh, grown up receiving kisses from our mother, receiving hugs from our mother, and the mother is holding the hand of the child to take uh, the child to different places. 
your mother must have hold, uh, held your hands and taken you to different places. And you have been such uh, loving daughters and sons to your parents. And your parents have so much of love. So all this love and attachment, is this not good at all? Will it, go, will it uh, really be our purpose? Um, no, Mataji, because um, like not too much because, uh, that um, you'll forget the reason that you're um, in the material world, that you have to go back to Krishna. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So while in the material world, it is very uh, natural for human beings to have all these emotions, love and uh, anger and um, not just uh, attachment, but also possessiveness and uh, so many other things, affection, care, all these things are all very natural. We cannot become inactive or inert. It is natural for human beings to have all these emotions, not just human beings, even animals have. So what to speak of human beings? It is natural. You cannot curb your natural tendencies. But if we become too attached to materialistic things, then that is going to take us far away from Krishna. And if our family members, if we are able to uh, relate to our family members in a Krishna conscious way, if Krishna is the center of our actions and our relationships, then what happens? That relationship is going to make you more Krishna conscious and it purifies our emotions and attachments. So we can use the emotions or our attachments. So emotions is nothing but feelings, okay? So it is natural for us to have feelings but we can use the feelings in Krishna's service. We can have emotions or attachments to Krishna's devotees. And we can also have attachment and emotions to our family members. And uh, if they are Krishna conscious, and even if they are not Krishna conscious, we can try to make them Krishna conscious. So if we use our emotions in Krishna's service, keeping Krishna as the center, then all these emotions and attachments are not wrong. Because ultimately, these people or this attachment is going to make you remember. So this is using emotions in Krishna's service, just like how we can use our things in Krishna's service and purify it. Similarly, we can also use our emotions and our attachments on our feelings in Krishna's service. So then it becomes pure. Okay, Sri Lakshmi has a question. Sri Lakshmi, you want to ask something? Well, is there, is there are Krishna's world on like on top of all the ten worlds. Yes. Krishna's Krishna's planet is there. We saw in the shloka also, right? Goloka Vrindavana. And there also people have all these emotions and attachment and feelings. Is there people there? Yes, of course. And they're all serving Krishna. They're already happy serving Krishna. Okay, so let's move on to the next part. And we saw that how, uh, okay, so we in this picture, we, saw, we see how the devotee kids are playing with each other. And in the bottom, we see how a father is uh, inspiring a child to chant. And on the right side, we see how the devotees as a community, they are all very attached and very loving. As a loving community, they are all helping each other in their devotional service. And we see this picture of Hanuman. Hanuman even used anger in devotion. When a devotee gets angry, it is not to defend himself, but it is to defend other Vaishnavas. When you hear some Vaishnava being insulted or when a Vaishnava being hurt, then you can use your anger also in devotional service. So you can use all emotions in devotion also. Okay, so now we saw that how King Bharata was having compassion for the fawn because it lost its mother. And because of his compassion only, he got attached to the deer and he lost his purpose. So is having compassion to animals wrong? We also saw some time back that having, um, your, your, you have to care for animals and you should not kill animals. You should be very uh, friendly and nice to animals. So having compassion towards an animal is not wrong. So what went wrong with King Bharata's compassion? Does anybody want to say? Ojasvi, Ojasvi, do you want to say? Yes, Madaji. 
What was, what was the question? What was wrong with King Bharata's compassion? He only had compassion, right? He only felt pity for the deer. What was wrong with that? Compassion. Is having compassion to animals wrong? No. Then what was wrong with the compassion or the pity that he had? He came to the forest to meditate. Yes. And being attached to the pawn was, was it helping him in his meditation? No, Mataji. No. He got distracted from his real purpose, right? So that yes. compassion is not right. Thank you, Ajishri. So having that kind of compassion is not good. Because if we have compassion towards the material needs of somebody, there is no end to it. We will get lost. And what is real compassion then? Real compassion is when you show compassion to the soul, other person, to somebody else's bodily needs, then it is like saving the person who is drowning. Instead of saving the person who is drowning, if you save the shirt, then how uh, stupid it is. It is like that. So we cannot completely satisfy everybody's bodily needs. We can only show compassion for somebody's soul by preaching to them about the message of God. Okay? So this is real compassion. That's what went wrong with King Bharata's compassion. So having compassion is good. Having compassion for other souls, but not just the bodily needs, but also the soul. And here we see the example of food for life. Okay? So here they are satisfying the hunger of people and also they are giving them Krishna Prashad. That way they are nourishing their soul also. So this is combined. Ventilial and uh, spiritual uh, need is satisfied here. Okay? They are sowing the seed of spiritual life into people by giving them prashad. Okay? So let's move to our uh, next session. We have uh, less time. But I want to give an exercise about a crossword puzzle. Okay? So this is my puzzle that I have based on the first four days of Lessons, okay. So this is the puzzle. I don't know. Is it okay? Let me share the screen. Okay, can you see my screen now? Okay, let me stop share and do it again. Yes, Mataji, we can see. Oh, okay. Yes, Madhuri. Okay. So I have two uh, things here. One is the uh, main sheet, and I cannot uh, write here because it is a PDF file, but I have another uh, uh, file where I can write. But uh, if anybody knows the answer, you can raise your hands, okay? The first one is down, okay? Uh, I have across clues and down clues, so you can say the answer if you uh, know it. Please raise your hands, okay? The first one down is. Okay, let's read across first. Okay, across the first clue, the Can second one. Everyone unmuted. Uh, so maybe um, you can raise hands so that uh, we can avoid. Okay. Okay. Let me read out the question and then you say. King Bharata thought that he was the dearest. What? Mother. 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 Okay. Mother. 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 Protector. How many squares we have? One, two, three, four, protector. five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes. Who said that? Who said protector? Protector. 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 I will write here. I will write here protector. Protector. Okay, so the number of statue King Bharata was always thinking about protecting the deer, right? So protector is the right answer. Very good. is there a crab? There's no craft today, it's just the uh, game. Okay, so you're playing the game with me. Okay, the second one, the third one across. King Bharata was not afraid to give up his wealth and kingdom. This showed his, it's a big square, it's a big word. 
Let's renunciation. 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 A-I-O-N. Very good. Very good job with the big word. You did well. The next one is, uh, fourth one across, Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripe fruit of Vedic literature. 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 Okay. Oh. So we saw this in the first class, right? Sure. How Srimad Bhagavatam is the ripened fruit of Vedic literature. Yes, you got it right. Sure. Very nice kids. You're doing really good. Teacher. The next one is a ripened, the seventh one across. A ripened fruit becomes more tasteful when tasted by this bird. Which bird is that? Carrot. 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 Which river Gandhi was that? River. Gandhi 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 River. Okay, now you have got all these clues. You can see this. If you, you can take this as a clue for doing the down one also. Okay, so the down first one. This was the main purpose of King Bharata coming to the forest. What was the main purpose?
Fawn. Fawn. The last one, the doe which came to drink Fawn. water, leaped in fear because of the roaring of a lion. 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 Mataji, can you please mute? Lion. Lion. Okay, so lion. I have I have the answers here. This is what we did. And you all did an awesome job. You were very fast. Not even wait for me to write the answer. You were all very quick. And uh, I really had fun playing this game with you. Did you all have fun? If you had fun, please raise your hands. Okay, so I had fun. I hope all of you had fun playing this game. And I am very happy because you all paid attention to all the four classes. And that's what uh, makes me happy. Thank you so much for all the attention and for all the right answers. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, everybody can uh, lower their hands. Mataji, please lower. Okay, does anybody have any questions before we end? Aryan, did you have any question? Okay. Okay, so if nobody has any questions, then thank you all very much for no, giving all the attention. I don't have a question. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. So, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Kr